Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to talk about how to make sort of a microprocessor look using master properties in After Effects. So we're going to build complex circuitry procedurally using master properties, which are going to look like this. So let me show you how it's built. First, we have a source comp that obviously has our source. So if we swap this to like WB here, we can click on our other comp, which is just a static version of the first one. You can see that it updates automatically. If we go crazy and put both in here, it'll do that. Normally it takes a second to actually generate this, but I've already clicked on that accidentally once or twice. So it's fast. So let's turn that off and you can see that it goes back to normal. Circuit mat and edge mat basically control where our circuitry is going to be showing up on top of our source. The first one, circuit mat, controls all of this circuit area. And then the edge mat controls this like edge thing here. It goes all around the um, edge. So those are pretty simply built. We have that same source comp under mosaic on an adjustment layer. And then the secret sauce is that we're using a stroke layer style. Circuit mat is set to a size of 40. And edge mat is basically the same thing, but the size of the stroke is 20. Because we want the edge to be thinner. And then our last specific comp is this transistor mat. We're going to use our transistor mat as a luma mat for different layers of our circuit boards so that you can see different parts on top of our source. So in here I have a controller with a slider on it called a mount. That's intended to go from 0 to 100. I have an adjustment layer with mosaic again. And these mosaics are all set to the same value so that everything lines up. And then we have our source comp again, and that's matting out a fractal noise on a shape layer. I've messed around with the settings using dynamic and block. I've upped the contrast a lot. And this brightness is actually controlled with an expression. It's pretty simple. I'm just bringing in that amount slider. And then I'm using a linear function to remap the values of that slider from 0 to 100 to negative 158. 10. And I basically just mess with brightness values until these were almost all the way gone. You can see at 0, it looks like that. At 100, it looks like that. And that's the most I wanted these to be. So let's undo that. And then once I had that set up, I basically just dragged the random seed from the fractal noise effect, it's here under evolution options, into the essential graphics panel. And then I dragged the amount slider into that as well, so that I'd have master properties that I can control in other comps. After that, I just built some different circuit board looking things. We got our processor board here. This is just something I made in Illustrator over top of like a CC ball action deal with fractal noise. And then I made an X board. This is also something I made in Illustrator and duplicated a bunch of times. And then I resized it and saved a PNG out. Then I have this Vias board, which is also a thing I made in Illustrator on top of another thing I made in Illustrator. It's kind of have the feel of some sort of connections on the board. And then these last three layers are set up very similar. I have a digital grain on top so that the kind of things change a little bit. Everything outside of this shape really won't be seen, but these little glitches will pop in over the actual processor layer, which will give it some interest. All three of these are basically set up the same way. We have the grain on top. We have our edge mat set to multiply, which actually adds back in this white edge because we're multiplying over a transparent image. And then we have that full processor board layer matted out with a circuit mat using Luma mat. Same thing for the X circuits, same thing for Vias. And the animated one, I have one for data. That's basically one of the things that we did in a recent tutorial, just kind of on its own. This stuff is in a movie, so I don't have a separate comp for it. So let's go back to this processor comp and see how it's all put together. On top of everything, we have this source matting out a color layer that does tint. And under that is another tint that makes everything gray. If you turn these two off, you get kind of an interesting look that's based off of the kind of like x-rays that you'll see of like processors because that was kind of the initial inspiration for this tutorial. But I'm going to turn those back on for now. I have a light on here that'll basically turn everything off when you turn it off, because a lot of this stuff is using CC glass, and that light is important to get the bumpiness of it. And then these next layers are all set up the same way. They all have a CC glass that's looking at one of our matted out board layers, like these. So what's cool is that by using CC glass, we get to take our 2D source and make them look like they're kind of 3D under a microscope. Under that, we're using a set mat, and that's set to a transistor mat. So all these transistor mats here have different settings from our original. This one's using a seed of one. It's using an amount of 68. And if we mess with these, you can see it changes what parts of the board are showing. I close those up. And you can see down here are the pre-matted circuit board layers like this. Down at the bottom. And then I just have some layers to build up the background. 
In between, you can see I've built an edge and a shadow. That's just so we have kind of a 3D thing going on here. It's basically just radial blur, the levels to crunch the alpha back down, and then a gradient ramp that built that color scheme from before. And then under that, it's the same kind of setup just for a shadow. There's no levels to crunch it back down, so we get this dark shadow to the same angle. And that's all you really need to do to make a pretty cool microprocessor look. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure to keep up with the blog and check out the store at workbench.tv. And subscribe if you like videos like this, because we do one every week. As always, I am Joe, and we'll see you next week. Bye.